Water bottles and notebooks are perfect for teens on the go. Check them out in the description. I never really meant to fall in love at all. In fact, I was absolutely against it. I'd just gotten out of a bad relationship with my ex, who dated five girls behind my back, and when I confronted him about it, he had the nerve to blame me. I just needed some attention, and you were never there. I live two houses down from you. If you were lonely, you should have just come over or called. That's too much work, and you know I hate talking on the phone, and hanging out at your house is so boring. My face is too pretty to be stuck inside all day. I was thinking maybe I can be your boyfriend on Fridays and I can date other people on Saturdays. I dumped that idiot and tried dating other guys, but that didn't work out. It felt like I was kissing a bunch of frogs. They were either too stupid, too vain, or just plain jerks. On my 16th birthday, I decided to stay away from boys and focus on school instead. I had dreams of following in my parents' footsteps and becoming a famous architect. But then I met Sam and he ruined my life. Sam was a star football player with a cocky attitude and he walked around school like he owned the place. All the girls were in love with him and boys acted like he was some kind of superhero. Sam sat next to me in science class and every day he'd wink at me with this dumb grin on his face, but I ignored him. He wasn't my type. Anyway, one time during a science test, I caught Sam copying my answers. Hey jerk face, stop cheating. Get over yourself. I'm smarter than you. I dropped my pencil on the floor and I was picking it up. Three of your answers are wrong anyway. Yeah, right. You think I was born yesterday? Suddenly, the teacher popped up out of nowhere and started screaming like a maniac. She snatched our tests, gave us a big fat F, and sent us both straight to detention. I tried to tell her I was innocent, but she refused to listen. After detention, Sam caught up to me, and I was mad as a wet cat. I'm really sorry. Leave me alone. You've done enough damage. I didn't mean to get us in trouble. I really did drop my pencil. I'll make it up to you, I swear. I stormed off, but the next day, Sam convinced convinced the teacher to let us work on a special project after school so we could get extra credit. Sina, it's all good. I told you I'd make this right. It's the least you could do. You're the one who got us into this mess. I'll take that as a thank you. Besides, you're the lucky one. You get to spend time with me and my biceps. He started flexing his muscles like he was in a bodybuilding competition. Then he pulled out his phone and took a selfie. Could you be any more self-absorbed? Come on, I'm just joking. I'm actually really cool if you get to know me. He gave me his number, winked at me, and then walked away. So annoying. Sam and I met after school to work on our project, and to my surprise, he was actually really smart. And I tried to fight it, but I started to develop a huge crush. Sam had the most beautiful brown eyes, and every time he looked at me, my heart fluttered. One time, his finger brushed against mine, and I swear there was a spark. Before I knew it, we were holding hands, and we went from talking about atoms and electrons to kissing. And man, that kiss was was amazing. After that, we were inseparable. We couldn't get enough of each other. We finished each other's sentences. Soon, we were madly in love. An epic love like you read about in fairy tales. Life was perfect, but then everything changed. Suddenly, Sam stopped meeting me after class. He stopped answering my texts and funny memes. I figured he was busy, so I gave him some space. Then I heard he quit the football team. I got really worried, so I asked him about it. I'm fine. It's nothing. No, it's not. You've been playing football your whole life. You've been obsessed with playing in college and going pro. You can't just quit. You're not the boss of me. I do what I want. He marched off without another word. After that, things got even worse. He started hanging out with a bad crowd and he totally changed. He didn't smile anymore or crack jokes like before. He was as cold as an iceberg. Every time I tried to talk to him, he was snappy and rude. Then one day, he stopped showing up in school. I went by his house, but it was empty with a for sale sign outside. I asked the neighbors what happened and they told me that Sam and his parents left in the middle of the night. I tried everything to reach Sam. I was so confused and worried. Then one day, he DM'd me from his Insta. He told me he wanted to break up, suggested that I move on with my life, and then blocked me. I was completely devastated. I couldn't imagine life without Sam, and I couldn't understand why he'd do this to me. I collapsed onto my bed and hid under the covers for days. My best friend Shelly came to my rescue. She brought me ice cream, chocolate cake, and we watched dozens of MSA videos. Slowly, I started to feel better, but every time I saw something that reminded me of Sam, I burst into tears. It's been six months. It's time for you to move on. But there's no me without Sam. We're two peas in a pod. Two halves of one heart. I can't live with half a heart, Shelly. I'm only human. Shelly grabbed all my pictures and gifts from Sam and tossed them into a shoebox. What are you doing? 
I'm giving you your freedom back. Sam's long gone. It's time for you to move on. Shelly was right. They were just things, and they only made me sad. Shelly put all Sam's stuff in the fireplace. We burned them and roasted marshmallows. And slowly, things started getting better. I even graduated from high school at the top of my class. Shelly and I applied to our dream college, and we both got in. During our first week there, Shelly and I went to this cool college party, and this boy named Roger asked me to dance. I'm not much of a dancer. I'm not either. Don't worry about it. Just follow my lead. Roger pulled me to the dance floor, and we danced the night away. Though we both looked like a pair of crazy chickens stomping our feet and shaking her butts. I couldn't remember the last time I'd had so much fun. Roger wasn't the hottest boy around, but he certainly had confidence and charm. One day you're gonna marry me. I hardly know you. Plus, I'm happily single. Not for long. I'm going to chase you, treat you like a princess, and soon you'll be in love with me. After that, Roger went on a mission to capture my heart. He brought me a bouquet of daisies. I saw them and thought of you. But I was allergic and I broke out in hives. A week later, he tried to cook for me at his place. I think something's burning. It's not burning. Everything's fine. Then the kitchen caught fire. Every day, Roger tried something new to win my heart and it started to get out of hand. He hung a banner from the roof of my dorm to wish me a happy birthday and almost fell off a ladder. He jumped on a stage at a nightclub to sing me a song and twisted his ankle. As I drove him to the emergency room, he asked me to be his girlfriend. Honestly, even though I didn't feel crazy sparks with him, it felt nice to be loved this way. He was a good guy, so I said yes. A couple years later, I got an internship to work at my family's business, and it was the best. I helped my parents design a state-of-the-art office building and land a huge new client. One morning before work, I stopped at a coffee shop for breakfast. I'd just taken a huge bite of my scone when I looked up and saw Sam walk through the front door. My heart nearly stopped. I felt a surge of emotion I hadn't felt in a while. And then he spotted me. Natalie? I gulped down my scone in a hurry, and suddenly I was choking. I jumped out of my seat and started flapping my arms around like a wild bird, banging into customers and knocking coffee all over the place. Then suddenly, Sam rushed toward me and performed the Heimlich maneuver, and I spat out my scone. As I gasped for air and backed away from him, I slipped on some spilled coffee, hit my head, and everything went black. I woke up in a hospital bed and saw Roger and Shelly staring down at me. I'm so happy you're okay, Gumdrop. I don't know what I would have done without you. Thank goodness your friend Sam was there. The doctor said that he saved your life. You met Sam? He was here at the hospital. He left ten minutes ago. Don't worry, Pumpkin. I invited him out to dinner tomorrow night. It's the least we could do. He saved your life. Roger hugged me tight. I smiled and pretended to be cool, but my stomach started turning backflips. A couple of hours before dinner, I started freaking out. Shelly came over to calm me down. I can't do this. What's the big deal? You're over Sam, right? I don't know. I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? You've been with Roger for two years. I know, but when I saw Sam, all my feelings for him just don't even say it. That jerk broke your heart, remember? He didn't deserve you then, and he doesn't deserve you now. Shelly was right. Sam was a heartless snake, so he might have saved my life. But even monsters are nice at least one day out of the year, right? I didn't need to be nervous about this dinner. I was dating Roger, and he was 20 times better than Sam. So I put on my fanciest dress and spent an hour on my makeup. I was gonna show Sam what he was missing. When we got to the restaurant, I was surprised that Sam showed up with a girl named Tia, who he introduced as his girlfriend. She looked like a supermodel, but she had the IQ of a rock. When Roger told Sam we were applying to graduate school, she said, You don't need to go to graduate school to learn how to graduate. Uh, that's not... Listen, all you do is tell your dad to pay off a couple of teachers to give you an A. Then you walk across the stage like this. Tia stood up and strutted up and down the restaurant, bumping into a waiter holding a tray of food, which was spilled all over her dress. The date was over after that, and I thought I was in the clear. But soon, Sam and Tia started showing up everywhere. I saw them at the coffee shop, Sam worked at my gym, and we both walked our dogs at the same park. And the worst thing was that Roger loved going on double dates with Tia and Sam. And I hated it. My blood boiled when I saw them holding hands. I wanted to scream when Sam kissed her. And I wanted to cry when I saw Sam smile and look at Tia the way he used to look at me. And then one day, I lost it. I called Sam and told him to meet me at a park on the other end of town where no one would see us. Okay, what's with all the secrecy, Nat? I feel like we're in a spy movie. I needed privacy. Fine, we're alone. Just me and you. 
It reminds me of old times. Sam stepped toward me, and my stupid heart fluttered. I hadn't been that close to him in years. I could smell his cologne, and it brought back so many beautiful memories. Then suddenly, blazing hot rage coursed through my veins. I hate you! Look, I was in a bad place. You made me fall in love with you, and then you broke my heart, and now that I finally moved on, you weasel your way back into my life to hurt me again! No, that's not what I'm doing. You're a monster! Leave me alone! I never want to see you again! I broke into tears, ran to my car, and drove off. But when I got home, I saw Roger at my door. What's wrong, Cupcake? I told Roger that I didn't want to go on any double dates with Sam and Tia anymore. I just wanted to focus on us. Of course, Sugar Bear. Whatever you want. Then I kissed Roger, but all I could think about was Sam. When I pulled away, Roger had this strange look on his face. Then he got down on one knee. I think I want to marry you. I don't have a ring, but I can get one right away. Just tell me what you want, and I'll buy it. I want it perfect, just like our love. I was overwhelmed and speechless. I'm sorry, I have to go. I think I left the iron on. Let's talk tomorrow, okay? I rushed inside and shut the door behind me. That night, Roger sent me pictures of dozens of rings and wedding venues. All of them were amazing. And part of me started thinking that sealing the deal with Roger would just make me move on for good. Okay, this is madness. You can't marry Roger if you're still in love with Sam. But you said he didn't deserve me, and you're right. He just came back to hurt me. And what he did the first time, that is unforgivable. Actually, that's not true. Ugh, I thought I wouldn't tell you because you were happy with Roger, but I can see that you're not, and I can't stay quiet anymore. What are you talking about? I've been volunteering at the hospital, and a few days ago, I spotted Sam leaving my uncle's examination room, who's an oncologist. I snuck in later and looked at Sam's file. My uncle caught me, and he was furious. But since I begged, he told me the whole story. Sam got really sick in high school. That's why he quit the football team. He was going through special treatment, but it wasn't working. So he and his parents moved away to enroll in a special treatment program. Now he's cured, but he still has to take medicines. I think Sam broke up with you because he didn't know if he was gonna survive it, and he couldn't bear to see you hurt. That's why he was a jerk. He wanted you to forget about him and move on. My heart felt crushed hearing this, but he's moved on. He's dating Tia. They broke up yesterday. Now she's dating a movie star. They're Insta official. I have to talk to Sam. What about Roger? I went straight to Roger's house and told him that I couldn't marry him. But why, Sugar Plum? You deserve someone better than me. I gave away my whole heart to someone else a really long time ago, and I never really got it back. I'm so sorry. Roger burst into tears, but he appreciated that I told him the truth. I hopped in my car and drove to the gym where Sam worked and almost hit a truck as I swerved into the parking lot. I texted Sam and begged him to come outside. I get it. You hate me. What else do you need to say? I know what you did, and you're an idiot. A big, stupid idiot. Sam stared at me. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to hurt you. Well, you did that anyway. I didn't need you to protect me. True love fights and lasts through the good and the bad. So what now? I threw my arms around him and held on tight as he hugged me back. You never let me go. I think I can do that.